Okay, um, we had talked at the uh, camping trip about uh, filtering water. I think there's a lot of importance to it. And what I'm going to really try to do is just show you some principles. A lot of it's going to make perfect sense if you lived out here for any length of time because we all at some level are filtering water. So we'll know more about the principles than somebody who may be new to this. So uh, what I've asked is uh, those of you that want to make one, if you bring a water bottle with a squeeze top on it. And uh, I'm going to discuss a little bit about the principles of water and uh, purification. And then uh, maybe over the next couple of classes, we'll, uh, we'll make a large community water filter. And then we'll uh, do some ceramic water filters like a Berkey. So first thing we kind of have to know is what's in the water and what types of water uh, are best to use. There are uh, numerous things in water that can harm you, and it's generally the things you don't see that are bad for you, not the things that you can see. Uh, the particulate floating in the water can be anything from sand, dust, dirt, uh, detritus, or dying uh, plant material, um, to even things that are living. Um, that are growing in the water. And then you have things that you can't see, like uh, chemicals, uh, amoebas, and other uh, small animals. And then you have uh, so toxins that can be in the water as well. And so what we desire is to be able to drink water in an emergency situation and not die. That's the main thing. But just not dying is not really uh, enough. There are people who 30 years after World War II were still suffering from uh, afflictions that were caused by dysentery during World War II. And it only takes one time that you get uh, amoebic dysentery or E. coli or something like that and you can wreck uh, your system, uh, your digestive system and your uh, digestive tract enough that you could have problems the rest of your life. And so just because water looks clear doesn't particularly mean that you can drink it. Uh, ideally, if water is looks clear and is moving, uh, it's much better for you and much much more likely to be good for you than any type of water that's not moving or that's still. Uh, secondarily to that, you have uh, clear water that's not moving that you would definitely want to boil and maybe filter. And then third and the worst is what we're going to use for this experiment is water that's not only sitting and not moving, has particulate in it, and animals have access to it. And so you can have any or all of the uh, pollutants that are available that can be in the water, anything from uh, chemicals that wash off the land to uh, E. coli uh, that can grow. And so what I've done over the last couple of days, I uh, went ahead and made some activated charcoal, and I'm going to explain what that is and how it works. And uh, for this project, I've got, I got beach uh, gravel, or, or not beach gravel, but creek gravel, and spent the day kind of cleansing that, that creek gravel. And I'll just give you an overview of what I did. And then uh, we purchased some sand, uh, because the sand that we have isn't really great for it. The stuff that we bought is not great for it either, but it should work. But uh, uh, at least it will help you know what, what to look for. None of these, all of these things are not necessary to make drinkable water. Uh, the more of these things that you have, then the, be the better the water that you can uh, provide for yourself. Um, in an ideal situation, in a survival situation, you would have a certain amount of water left over or available uh, that you could use to uh, purify or clean the materials that you would need to uh, provide yourself with more water. And it's one of those things that can be a catch-22 because it's, uh, to do this well, you need water to make more pure water. But you can make more pure water than the water that you need. And so in a situation where we were on the last trip, where we were camping, uh, <coughs> you would, uh, we carried in enough water to probably get us through the first day. And so if it was an emergency situation and we knew we had to make more water and we didn't have uh, purifiers, uh, we would uh, save that water as much as possible and use it for things like boiling beach sand or boiling uh, creek, creek gravel 
uh, to make sure that we kill anything that's in the gravel or that's in the sand that might pass into the water that we're going to use for filtration. And so without those things, uh, we rely on boiling. And so you would gather up uh, as much water as you can, as early as you can, and you would boil it uh, using our coal uh, fire method that we learned in the first class. And then you would use that, that water to, uh, to sterilize uh, the materials that you're going to use. And there's some other words. I want to define some words. Uh, when you buy in the store, you buy filtered water. There's a difference between filtered, pure, and sterile. Uh, filtered water, uh, merely uh, the, the minimum is that it's been filtered through some uh, type of filtering device that uh, brings it down to a certain micron. And this removes most uh, particulate and minerals out of the water. And even some uh, things like E. coli can be removed if it's filtered enough. Uh, pure water has had everything uh, removed from it, including uh, chemicals, minerals, and uh, it would be uh, akin to, to d distilled water, which doesn't have any even any minerals left in it. And then uh, sterile water can be water that has um, material in it that's uh, been rendered harmless by boiling or some other chemical method. So it's killed everything that's alive in it. And so these are, we don't want to get these terms uh, confused. So what you would do if you were on a camping trip is you would gather up your water, you would boil it, uh, so you could have that water then to, uh, to purify or to uh, sterilize the materials that you're going to use. And uh, also, pretty immediately, you would uh, begin making uh, activated charcoal. And so that's what I'm going to, we're going to walk over here to where I made some activated charcoal. I'm going to kind of explain that, and then we're going to start the process of getting it to, the, to a usable state, and then we'll move forward from there. <laughs> The term activated charcoal is uh, charcoal without chemicals or any other additives, uh, ideally that has uh, been ground to the point where its surface area is sufficient to uh, adsorb chem chemicals and toxins. And I use the word adsorb instead of absorb. Uh, the word abs to absorb is to soak it in to it, and that's not what activated charcoal does. Uh, with activated charcoal, the surface of the uh, uh, small granules or, or grains of charcoal has uh, such a, a great amount of surface area because it's pitted. Uh, the, uh, one gram of activated charcoal has the surface area of two tennis courts. And so uh, what it does is it, it adheres to the outside of the activated charcoal. And so when you uh, take an activated charcoal bed or uh, uh, an amount of activated charcoal and you pour water through it, any chemicals uh, or toxins that are in the water will adsorb into the, uh, the activated charcoal and just the pure water will pass through. Okay, and this also works in your body. And uh, they've taken, in tests, they've taken uh, lethal doses, five times the lethal, lethal dose of strychnine, they've mixed it, mixed it with just a few ounces of activated charcoal, and people have consumed it with very little uh, problems at all and it will, uh, it will absorb it, adsorb it that fast. Now once uh, a poison or a toxin is in your body, if you take it quickly, it can, it can adsorb most of it and you should be all right. If, however, it begins to absorb through your, into your tissues, it's too late because the uh, activated charcoal has to, t has to make uh, contact with the chemical or the toxin in order for it to uh, remove it. And so uh, activated charcoal can also be used uh, it has been used successfully in uh, rattlesnake bites, uh, uh, spider bites, as a poultice to remove uh, the uh, poisons that are still near the surface of the wound. And so uh, that's something else to remember. We, uh, activated charcoal is made by burning wood in a low oxygen environment. And so rather than the fire consuming the wood, 
it consumes the uh, gases that are stored in the wood and it leaves the wood in a charcoal state or uh, basically it's pure carbon okay and so uh, what I did is I put it, uh, the wood into the smoker you can do this right in the ground like we did during the camping trip and as soon as you have a uh, hot fire where the wood is, uh, uh, re uh, is red then you would uh, starve it of oxygen and what I did is took the, the lid of the smoker put it over the hole and covered it all with dirt so that very little oxygen can get in. And I did two piles. I did a smaller pile here. <coughs> now if you look at the charcoal, you have black and then you have what's white and gray that's become ash. This is very, very important. You never, ever want to add any ash to anything that you're going to drink because ash uh, creates lye. When water passes through ash, it creates lye, which is very, very caustic. It's a, it's a base and it'll burn you uh, just like acid will burn you. And so uh, you don't ever want to do that. You always want to use the parts that are black and you can knock off uh, the white part or uh, even wash it off if it's just on the surface. But you basically want to end up with black uh, charcoal. It's very light. And this is then uh, ground into uh, powder. You're all going to get a little bit on your fingers, but not much. It's ground into powder. And this stuff sells for you know, twenty or thirty dollars for you know eight to sixteen ounces of this, and you can make it in just a few hours. Uh, the best thing to do if you were camping is I would get my fire started almost immediately, uh, get the uh, wood out, get it uh, covered up, uh, and then you can go about some of these other processes we're going to talk about. Hopefully, you have enough water, like we said, to get through uh, at least half the day, if not the first full day, and then you could start this uh, water a drip purifier working the next day and you could should be able to produce enough water uh, for your needs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this I'm going to ask Kelly and Chris to take some of this and uh, underneath the cabin I think on that side are some of those um, uh, sandbags. Okay. Put this, uh, make sure you don't put any pieces on it that have white on them. Just put the black stuff or knock the white stuff off and put it into that bag and get a hammer out of that toolbox and just bang it up into a small particle. It doesn't have to be powder, just into a small particle. <coughs> and so uh, while they're doing that, we'll take a little break and then when they're ready, we'll start putting this thing together. Open a quarter of an inch up to an inch in size and then there's quite a bit of uh, that's pretty much smaller. And what we're going to do now is take a bunch of this and put it in the blender. If you were in the field, uh, this part would not be necessary. It just makes it better. The more uh, the surface area, the smaller the, mo the, uh, the particles, the better that it is. So we're going to blend it down uh, for this purpose. But like I said, if we were in the field, you would just uh, put this in a sock because you're going to make a pretty small one. And you would just keep hammering it until it was really, really small particles. And then you can just use uh, that sock or you could put it in another sock if you like to uh, put it into your filter. So mm -hmm. I'll try to not get this all over me. Here, hold up. Let's put it down there. Open that up here a little. Once we get into it. Yep. Okay, go blend that for me. Make sure you put the lid on. <laughs> That will yeah, wash out of the blender. Anyway, yeah. So the uh, the level of uh, that we're going to go through in filtration, uh, I'm going to start from the top and go down. The bottom is where you're either going to be dripping or you're going to be pouring out of. Uh, so I'll start at the top. At the top, you want your uh, the, the whatever your material is that's the largest, the largest material, and we're going to use hay and green uh, grass. There's some green grass down by the creek. I want to have the children go pick some. You can use brown grass too. Ideally you would use all green grass if, if you had it because uh, the way that it lays better and it's going to create a better mat, a filtration mat. <coughs> if you don't have that, hay is good and in worst case scenario any type of organic material that can be used as a filtration bed. What you don't want to use is any toxic plant, poison ivy, <laughs> or something that's going to create a uh, poisonous tea uh, that for you to drink. Uh, so uh, for the most part, we're going to use grass and hay or straw. 
on the top level. Uh, did you have a question? Uh, the next level uh, down under that is going to be your largest um, particles or materials of gravel uh, or sand, whatever you have. Now, what I'm trying to do is share the principles because I don't want you to say take what I take as a rule and think that you can't adapt it. You can adapt it with what you have. Once you learn the principle, then you can uh, use that uh, with what you have. Uh, the, the creek gravel that I got is uh, perfectly fine, and it would work uh, on its own without the sand. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a fine enough gravel, and there's enough uh, different sizes in there that it would work as a good filter bed. Uh, however, uh, you want your water to be as pure as possible, as pure as you can make it. And so if you have access on your trip or in the situation to sand, and I would imagine if we looked hard enough, there's probably uh, pockets along this creek uh, deposits of granular sand or silica sand that we can use. I just didn't look that hard. And so, uh, uh, so you would want to start with the, uh, the the top, the largest particles on top, and the smallest particles or sand on the bottom. And then between these layers, uh, you would want to, if you can, you don't have to add these, but if you want to, uh, uh, or if you are able to, you want to add uh, different layers of filtration that you can make out of clothing. And we're going to use. For these smaller ones, we're going to use socks. But you could use a T-shirt, and uh, uh, generally, what that allows you to do is it, it allows you to clean and recharge the unit uh, without having to do totally just throw it out and redo it all. If you just have loose sand in the bottom and gravel on top of that, and then your organic material on top of that, it's going to end up getting mixed up, and it's going to be difficult for you to go through and, and recharge it. And so, actually, uh, between the uh, uh, the, the organic this is between the organic material and your uh, your stone or rock is going to be your activated charcoal uh, layer. Okay, so those will be able to be pulled out and then uh, <laughs> cleaned or recharged. In the case of the activated charcoal, you would just make more. And so uh, here on this land, we've got uh, virtually endless supply of hard woods. Uh, you want to use the hardest wood that you have available to make the charcoal too. And so. Uh, and the basic principle is, is that when you pour in the dirty water, uh, as it filters through, it's removing uh, the largest particles from the top. And as it filters down, it continues to separate the particles in size. And then when you get down to the, uh, when it starts to flow through the uh, activated charcoal, it's going to remove any acids, any toxins, any chemicals, or anything like that that's in the water. And then when, as it passes through the filter bed underneath that, it's going to continue to filter it down to the uh, small micron level, which will remove even things like, uh, at some level, depending on how good your filter is, things like viruses and those things. What I'm going to actually do on mine, too, and if you have it available, you could use a, a T-shirt, but uh, if you have a, a coffee filter, and I'm going to show those in a minute, but preferably, if you buy coffee filters, don't buy bleached white coffee filters because they have bleach in them, which is a, what we're trying to do is remove uh, chemicals from the water uh, by the uh, the natural coffee filters and you can put that uh, either several places throughout there or you can actually put it on your exit orifice and that will give you one last uh, pass of filtration. Now, uh, how confident you feel in the water when you're done uh, is is going to determine whether or not you, deter that you decide to drink the water at that point or whether you want to uh, boil it which is always a good idea, especially if you have water that's uh, subject to things like E. coli, where animals have access to it. And so if you have a, a pond or uh, you come across a body of water where it's obvious that cows have access to it and there's uh, feces or manure laying around, then you would probably, if you have the time, want to uh, take the pure water, pure water that you're getting out of the filter and just go ahead and boil it, uh, just to make double sure it doesn't cost you any extra other than time and you lose a small amount of the water. But if you have the fire and the wood and the time, then it's worthwhile to do it. For the most part, in an emergency situation, uh, God has created our bodies uh, to work marvelously as filters. And we, you can uh, drink this water. Uh, you may, uh, the first day or two, <coughs> have uh, a difference in your digestive system including uh, diarrhea, because not because there's anything particularly wrong with the water, it's just not the water your system is used to. And so everybody's uh, 
body has to adapt to the water that they drink, hey, no matter where it is, even when you go to somebody else's property and you drink water out of their well. And so you may have some discomfort for a day or two, but your body should adapt uh, to it very, fairly quickly. It doesn't mean you have dysentery or that you're dying uh, just because you get uh, diarrhea or stomach upset uh, when you first start drinking the water. So uh, with that, you got it? All right. So this is what we end up with, and this is really, really good. You can see that. It's a powdered form. Let me pass that around and I'll take a look at it. <coughs> and then uh, this is what you would take, and you could put it in a jar and put it in your cupboard and use that in emergencies or for a poultice or even if you wanted to take it, like we were talking about weekly, uh, to reduce acid, uh, other problems in your body. So, Okay, we're going to go inside now and start putting this thing together. Now, um, one of the things we talked about doing was making a uh, water filter out of <coughs> water bottles. Uh, the bigger the water bottle, the better. Where's uh, your two bottles? I just brought one. Okay. If you had two, two of them would actually be pretty good. Do um, you have a knife? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, everybody. Miniature. <laughs> So, uh, give me, Kelly, you have, give me a good knife. He's got one. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. Uh, basically, what we have here is a, is a mini Berkey uh, drip system. And what we're going to do, if this is all you had when you were in the field, you would want to cut, cut this bottle. And basically, what you want to think about is the bottom portion of this bottle is going to be the top drip system, and the bottom portion of the bottle is going to be your receiver that's going to catch the water. Okay? So, uh, now this is a... Uh, 25 ounce bottle. Uh, this is probably about as small as you would want one. I mean, you don't want one much smaller than this. Of course, you got to use what you have, and the principle will work. So it's going to take a lot of time uh, to purify enough water to get you, especially in the heat of the summer. Now, uh, one of the things to think about and constantly remind yourself is what I'm teaching you is the principle. So once you learn the principle, you can do this your own way. And if you have the time, the energy, and the resourcefulness, you can carve these uh, out of wood. You know, you can uh, you can make them out of any PVC pipe, or you can make them out of anything that you can find. So the principle remains the same. Uh, all we're all we're really trying to do is learn the principle. I'm going to cut this uh, try without cut myself. It usually cuts pretty easy once you get a hole put in it. Like he said. Basically, I don't think I did this correctly, this will work. What you'd end up doing, I wanted to have enough area to pour enough water in here. And uh, if you had a cup on your camp trip, you could put this directly into a cup. This is if this is all you have. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to create our small filter system in the top of this cup. I'm actually going to let you do this one, and I'm going to make it out of these two large uh, Gatorade bottles, because this will be a lot easier for showing, showing the principle. And on this bottle, what I did, is I took the lid, since it doesn't have the squeeze bottle, these drip, sorry, these uh, drip naturally. When you open up the top, just through gravity, it's dripping right now with almost no water in it. Okay? With the Gatorade bottle, what I did is I took a nail and I punched, and you could use your pocket knife or anything that would uh, uh, punch small holes in it. Okay? <laughs> and what I'm going to do with this one, since I'm going to make a fairly... Uh, fairly large filter is I'm going to cut the top off of this one and I'm, it's already dripping. Uh, I'm going to cut the, uh, the top off of this one and the bottom off of this one and set them inside each other like that so it gives me a larger filter. familiar with the Big Berkey system, this is basically what we just created. Okay? Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this lid that we've got, and you can do the same thing there with yours. I've got a uh, coffee filter. 
This is not necessary, but it's, it's good to do. And I'm going <laughs> to rip off a piece that is going to... Uh... Now, what you'll have to do when you're making this is you'll have to adapt things as you find out if they work or not. If the thing is not uh, dripping well enough, which means it's filtering really, really well, then you're going to have to adapt it. And uh, so I'm hoping that with this uh, coffee filter, the water is still going to pass through. Uh, and this is going to give us one last level of uh, filtration before the water leaves the system. Okay. And what we said is we wanted on the uh, bottom of the filter, we want the smallest particles. So that's going to be our sand. I'm not going to put the sand uh, into a sock, but if you were afraid, maybe if you didn't have the filter, coffee filter, and you're afraid that you're actually, and your sand is a very small particulate, you're afraid it was actually going to pass through, then you would place the sand into a sock that you would put down in the bottom of this, and that would add one further level of filtration. I'm not really concerned with that, that happening, so I'm going to take sand, dump some here in the bottom, you want a pretty good filter bed there. I'm going to get you to pause that, and we're going to go out and get the gravel. We're going to go out. <coughs> Ready. Okay, now we're going to use the gravel. And this is gravel that I got out of the creek. If you want to show this, this is what it was like when it just came fresh out of the creek. And there's quite a bit of dirt in here. And so what I did is, hold that phone, will you? Is I had two more of these Gatorade bottles, and I filled them up with gravel, or two-thirds of the way full and pour water that I had uh, in there and shake them up real good, get as much of the dirt uh, in the uh, suspension form and then pour it out and pour some more water in there and pour it out and I use that for watering the trees since we don't have much water right now. When you get it to the point where it's satisfactory, uh, I put it into our container here that we use for heating up water for the chickens in the mornings in the winter and uh, we boiled it and this is to make sure that there's no uh, uh, viruses or, or like E. coli that can be in the uh, creek sand to make sure we kill any of that. And so, uh, we're, yep, there we go. I'm going to do this without trying to burn myself. So this goes in on top. And you could make a an effective filter just out of this. You want to show this? Sure. You can see the, how, how many small particles there are. Mm -hmm. And so you could make it just out of this without the sand. And it, it should work uh, just fine. Now, you don't want to put too much material in here because every scoop of everything that you add in here removes, we don't want that big rock in there, uh, some water that you can add. You know, you see, we've got to have water in here. And the more water you have, the more gravity weight you have that causes the, uh, the water to filter through. So that's that. I added about maybe two inches. You see, it's already the water that was in the gravel is already starting to filter through. So now we're going to go put in the. Uh, let me shut that off. Like I said, it's basically the principle you have to remember. So if you didn't have uh, uh, the material that I'm using, uh, maybe you didn't have the. the I'm going to use socks, or if you didn't have, if you could use a t-shirt, or you can use uh, a, a coffee filter in between these levels. The main reason you want to separate these levels by something that adds more filtration is so that if you can, you can pull that section out and recharge it and reuse the, the, the system without having to throw the whole thing out and start over again. So what I'm going to do now, best I can, is I'm going to take a sock. I didn't try these for size. These are new. And we're going to fill this with uh, the activated charcoal. And what we're going to try to do, if it'll work, if it's big, the bottle may be too big, is try to bend it over the outside. If that doesn't work, we'll put the activated charcoal in there in a way where it actually stops up the whole bottom and then we'll uh, layer the sock over it, which just gives you more filtration. And then we'll add, add the next level. So I'm going to need somebody to volunteer. Level for you? Yeah. No, just, uh, what I need you to do is uh, get some of that and put it in here. This could make a mess. Yeah, that's good. We want to put quite a bit of this. We want several inches of the activated charcoal. Another way you could do this if you only had a piece of cloth is to put the piece of cloth down in there and then just pour uh, the activated charcoal on top of it. Okay? The, the 
reason I'm doing it this way is because I want as much as possible to be able to remove this and, and uh, add more charcoal at a later time so it's like a removable filter. Don't know if this sock will be usable again. If you were in a, an emergency situation or like a camping trip, you could actually take socks and uh, that you had in your uh, in, with you, and you could boil them, and then they would work fine. Okay, let me see how much we got. Here. Okay, yeah. What I try to do is arrange this in a way that basically stops up the whole bottom of the. Uh, would you give me a pair of scissors? Yeah. I'm cut these. So I'm going to cut the top part of this sock off. Okay, and children, I need you guys to go get some type of container. And down by the creek, there's uh, tall green grass that's still green. It does not all have to be green. There's some brown grass with it. But I need you to get me, um, I would say, about that much green grass with uh, uh, as much green grass as you can get. Okay? Y'all go run and get where? down, just run straight down by the creek where that tall grass is back there by the shower. Now with yours, you could take that that uh, sock and you could just fold it over the over the top. This isn't going to work perfectly, but it should work fine. Okay, uh, now we've got our grass. One of the biggest problems we may have is it may take some time for uh, the water to filter through because we don't have enough space. Uh, I put a lot of material. You could put less material and you'd have more space for water and you get more weight, uh, gravity weight, pushing the water down through. So it may take, it will eventually uh, cycle through. So it just, you, know, you kind of continue to adjust it. If you come back in 30 minutes and there's very, very little water coming through, then you can adjust, uh, pull out the sock, maybe take out some of the carbon or take out some of the gravel. Or uh, what I would do first is remove the uh, coffee filter from the bottom because that's really just a, it's a uh, last ditch filtration just before uh, the water goes through and it's something that could possibly be removed. So I'm going to take some of the grass here and uh, We're going to shove it down there pretty good. Still want to leave ourselves some room for water. Okay. Now I need something to take water out of here. Yeah, a big, bigger cup. Now this water comes straight out of our pond, which... Uh, when you yeah, this work. Work. Which, like I said, is worst case scenario. This is uh, a, 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 much like the creek we had our water from at, at the camping trip. It's uh, not moving, which is bad. It's uh, stagnant, which is bad. It's got particulate in it, which is bad. And animals have access to it. So all of those things mean that the, uh, the water, there are warning signals for the water. Okay? So this is about the worst case scenario what we can have here. Now, if everything works out perfectly, which is not likely, <laughs> we will have, uh, it's already starting to drip. So, okay, so we're already getting water drip through. And then what you would want to do is keep water moving through it, because the more water you have in there, the more gravity uh, you have pushing pushing down on it. So it's actually moving pretty quickly. Very clear. Yeah, it's coming out pretty clear. Okay, you can go ahead and pause it and then we'll fast forward. I was explaining while the camera was off that we got just a little bit of uh, cloudiness just from the water that was still in the gravel. Ideally, I would have let the gravel dry 
in the sun first, but I didn't. But it's perfectly fine because that gravel was boiled, so there's no, there's nothing that could have been in the water that would hurt you. But the only particles you can see in this that keep it from being pure are there are a couple of particles of uh, activated charcoal that came from the side that went over because I didn't perfectly seal the side. But the water is perfectly good. And compared to what it was, you can see it's fine. So that's the presentation. We'll do uh, probably two more or at least one more uh, class on water when, where we'll make the uh, ceramic filters. Any questions? You may want to try it. This is like water. Okay. Actually, it tastes better than uh, what came no, through good. the uh, commercial filters when we were yeah, tapping, I think. that's what I was thinking. I got, I got, more, I got more taste out of my uh, cannon, my, my uh, canteen water. Yeah, a little, little more.